Yes, could I have two large double doubles and an angel cream donut? And will that complete your order? Yes, it will. 527 at the window. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Jesus Christ, it sounded like the pits of Satan was answering. <laughs> <clears throat> I forgot the damn ruler. Yeah, it's weird, right? You're like five inches taller than me, but like your hands are definitely wider than mine. Like yeah. the base of your hand is definitely wider, but like from a span perspective, we're like we're pretty, we're pretty close. I was uh, I was very curious about it yesterday, so I uh, you measured. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd you come out with? Ten and five eighths. Ooh. Uh, huh. That gets you drafted. Yeah. <laughs> to what? Hold. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. There you go, sir. Thank you very Have much. All right. You too. <laughs> Have a good day. Sir? Don't sir me. I look around for somebody else's holder. You know, that's sir. interesting, right? Because I, I hate when women get called ma'am. Like, it actually bothers me when women get called ma'am. Right? Because it's just so... I know it's... I know it's a pleasantry, but I view it as impersonal. I might, I might be the only one. I might not be the only one I view it as mm. personal but there's like no miss right yeah like think of all the ones that there are for women miss mrs. Ms. ma'am my lady if you're in another part of the world. oh my god yeah if you're <laughs> bowing kissing somebody's hand hey, you, my lady my lady can you imagine you said that now I want you to picture back when you're 20 24 years old you're in a bar you want to go talk to a girl and you call her in conversation, my lady. You, my she, lady. she now thinks that you're going to duct tape her and put her in the trunk. Hello, my lady. But if I kept the accent going, then it would be, she'd be like, oh, you, you're not from around here, are you? Not with the way you do accents. Everybody sounds like John Gruden. <laughs> yes, which well, is weird because you think my John Gruden sucks. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> So every one of my impressions John, sounds John, like Gruden. Your John Gruden sounds like a drunk Al Pacino. It's not my fault. It's, it's not my fault. <laughs> oh, what a big man you are. I saw about uh, Garrett Bradbury. Straight killed it. McCoy. Yeah. Um, two centers. Shocking that the two highest linemen are, yeah. are the centers. Um, so in that respect... Well, I mean, your, this, your centers are going to put up faster numbers because they're typically smaller than the rest of your line. True, I mean, true. They're not always the fastest guys, though. No, they're but always. they're typically going to be faster. Yeah. You know? Like, I don't really care if they're faster. I care if they're smarter. Right. I really don't care if they're, if they're fast. If you try to look at it, uh, with, uh, Bradbury was at NC State and McCoy. What was McCoy at? A&M? Uh, that might be right. So you try to look at the type of offenses that they run. All right, NC State's typically a pro style system with NC State, and you got A&M, which is wide open. Uh -huh. So um, the type of line calls that they would have to have in that respect, one down, two down, three down look to set uh -huh. man protections, it's interesting how many times they would have done that. Little didn't look very good. No, and I, Little's one of the best tackles in the draft. I mean, he really, he really is. So maybe this should be the discussion, because there's people that absolutely hate the combo. Yeah, there are, and we understand that. It's the underwear Olympics, people call it. It's, sure. it's fine, but should it severely, if, like, if it, if a guy has a great year, plays great at the Senior Bowl, he's just not good at testing well. Mm -hmm. Really, should that drop his stock? Well, you know, you run into a you know, fascinating situation because we'll use. We use Little versus um, uh, Jawan Taylor. Okay, gotcha. uh, let's let's use Little versus Jawan Taylor. Little didn't test well. He ran like a five three three in the forty. When was the last time you saw a lineman run forty yards? Me? Never. Yeah. <laughs> You're chasing after that running back when you blow the gap inside. I'm running away from the bar tab. <laughs> okay, the thing about Little that bothered me was he didn't do the bench. Right? Really. Yeah, so he skipped the bench. I don't know if there was an injury issue. I don't know if maybe he was just, you know. Not but the bench, it. well, the bench is done a day before all the on-field drills. So. 
Okay. You know, like, I, I was kind of surprised that he skipped the bench. Um, but again, that shows me a guy that's not conditioned. And if and he looked like he wasn't conditioned. He looked out of shape. So, and that's a problem. So, yeah, from, from what we talked about, because the one thing that I did mention is that because when the season ends until the, the combine, there's like two months. Yep. A little over two months. Yep. That speaks to the mental aspect. Is that why? Right. That, okay. Yeah, he's maybe. not working. Maybe. Why wasn't he working to, you know, how will he work in the offseason when he's a pro? Right. When he's actually getting paid. Uh-huh. I yeah, mean, I don't understand why he looked the way that he did, right? Yeah, but then you good. look. But unfortunately, what Greg Little has done is that now he's forced comparisons, right? So where you look at his film and you go, okay, you know what? I like Greg Little a lot. You know, he looks good on film. And then you go to Juwan Taylor, and Juwan Taylor looks good on film. But you have some concerns about him and pass protection. Okay? Don't say it. Well, I'm just, he tested awesome at the combine. He looked quick, which now makes people go back and say, okay, well, let's look at his pass protection. Because he looked faster at the combine than you thought. Yeah, he definitely could have been working. But, you know, I get it, right? A lot of these guys might not pay attention to the technique stuff until mm-hmm. it's combine time. They might have floated through. Because in college, you can float through on pure athleticism. Yes. You can. Yes. You know? And we saw that with, um, not float through, so I don't want to <laughs> annoy too many people. But <clears throat> on his raw athleticism, he was a freak with, with Tremaine Edmonds. I mean, yeah. He was just flying all around. Yeah. He was just faster and stronger. And Absolutely. Bigger than everybody. Absolutely he so, was. And uh, there's guys that are just ath- athletic freaks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but offensive linemen from Miami always concern me a little bit with how much their buy-in is. Just saying. Do you, baby? With that being said, um, you look at Garrett Bradbury, who looked like a third-round pick. Yeah. He, was, he looked like a third-round pick. Normally centers are. Right. They, they are, yeah. anyway. Yep. He looked like a third-round pick, and he tested out of his mind at the combine. He looked quick. He looked strong. Uh, I heard he interviewed pretty well, too. He does interview really well. He's a smart kid. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the kind of guy you want leading your front five. Well, exactly. So then the going question becomes, is Garrett Bradbury, has the combine propelled him into a first-round player? I mean, when you draft a center, you're looking at a guy who's going to man your line for the next five to seven to ten years. Centers are a long drafted position. Yeah, those are the ones where back, back in the day... When you did hit on a tackle, yep, you, you kept him on the left side yep. for 14 years, right? You know, a Joe Thomas uh-huh. guy played forever, yeah. So um, Anthony Munoz, uh-huh. perhaps, yeah. And we <laughs> so all, and we all know that because of the fact that Bradbury played at the Senior Bowl, Dillard played at the Senior Bowl, yes. Andre Dillard. We know these guys are targets for the Bills because they play at the Senior Bowl. Like, it's not hard to figure out the Bills' drafting strategy. They go to the Senior Bowl, and they talk to these kids, and then they go to the Combine, and they see, okay, how much did you work from Senior Bowl to Combine? And the kids that work, that's who they're interested in. Do you think it would be very anticlimactic if the Bills in the second round took Bradbury? I don't Knowing know. Knowing they need a center? I don't know if he's going to make it to the second round. I, I know we always have talks about this, but yeah. the, Dallas – kind of set the pace a few years ago by trading back into the first to get their center. And everybody went, what are you drafting a center in the bottom of the first round for? You can get these guys in the second, third round. Yeah. Well, Dallas wasn't stupid. Yeah. You know, they go, well, this is what we need. There's nobody on the board like him. That's who we want. But again, you have to look at Bradbury with a little bit of a grain of salt because he's going to touch test well in the bench because he's got 31 inch arms. Mm. You know, like he's not long. That's big. Right? Yeah. He's a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller than your standard center. Right? He's not going to be able to frame out very much. Right, You talk about guys adding on weight. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Could, he could frame out a little. Do you want to talk about where they'll sacrifice a little bit of size? Because he's right. smack dab in the middle of that line. So he right. can be hidden. It's right. not like he has to face an edge rusher. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the one thing that I think this offensive line really needs is they need a center who can pull. If you can get a center who can pull, it completely changes your run game. And the Bills didn't have that with Bodine. Bodine doesn't pull very much. No, he's more stagnant. Right, exactly. So the Bills, if they're going to target somebody, Bradbury pulls really, really well. Elgin Jenkins. So Elgin Jenkins is the kid that I want to talk about. Because everybody here knows about Bradbury, but we haven't talked. I haven't heard anybody talk about Elgin Jenkins. 6'4", 34-inch long arms. He played tackle, played guard, and played center. The last two years he's played center. Okay. Okay. But 6'4 with 34 inch arms, that's a big center. Like normally you get a guy with 33 inch arms, they're playing 
They're playing outside. They're playing tackle. They're usually six two, six three centers. They're like yeah. maybe three oh three. Yeah, he's six six four, right? So Jeez. um he did twenty nine reps on the bench, right? But with longer arms than Bradbury. We talked about that on the combine. Mm -hmm. Was it the combine video? It doesn't matter what video it was. It um, was, we did talk about that. Yeah. So longer long arms, it's, it's tough to move that much weight that right. much further. Um his vert wasn't great. He's was twenty eight inches, which isn't very good. Well, it's a lot of weight. I get it, but not so you may say he's not explosive, <laughs> which means that the pop at the line is not going to be what you think it is. Right. The 20 yard shuttle was pretty good. It was 462. And 440 is like an elite number for mm. that drill. Uh, it was at 462, which I like a lot, which tells me he can move. Yeah. Right? So Elgin Jenkins might be the best pulling center in this draft. And he's also played all over life. He's played tackle, he's played guard. And I think that he's a bottom of the first round guy, top of the second round guy. But Bradbury is all the rage because of the numbers that he put up at the combine. So everybody's going to talk about Bradbury as a first round pick. And when Elkin Jenkins is taken before Bradbury, a lot of the draft pundits are going, oh, what happened? We had, since the combine, we had Bradbury as the best center in the draft. Yeah, because the, but, because they tested, because he tested so well. Right. That, that should not erase what 11 and 12 games told you about the guy. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. He tested great. He's working. So mentally, he's coming in prepared. You want somebody who's going to come in prepared and come in and be ready to go. That's that's great. However, it, should, it shouldn't erase the previous uh, play on the field of the guy, how he's performed against top elite talent. Right. Um, you know, okay, he wasn't a first-round selection before the combine. Why should he immediately be like cemented as a first-round selection after the combine? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Well, again, he's going to interview really well. You know, but Elgin no, the thing is, though, that I think about the, the combine, for me, is this. If you say, hey, this guy's a fringe second-round, first-round player, if he got a little quicker, I think he'd be a first-rounder. That's the only reason I would say. You know what I mean? Sure. But a guy that's come out of obscurity, but just tests well, Right. I don't get that. If you say, hey, this guy, if he can increase his lateral movement a little bit better, he's a first-round talent. But right now, he's a second-round talent because he can't move laterally that well. Right. He comes into the combine. He shows you he's got the best lateral movement of anybody. Mm -hmm. Hey, he worked. He worked to get better. He knew what his right. weakness was. He worked. He, com he came in. He's now a first-round talent. That, I don't mind. Right. But not a guy that, oh, is to... to from Directional University, he comes in and kills all the... You love statistics. Directional University. I love it. I love it. Dumpster diving. I can't believe that term <laughs> took off. I go and I look at like dumpster the, diving. And like the next ten comments on our video are all talking about the how the Bills dumpster dive. So I want I want to walk through the importance real quick of the center position because if we're hitting on a topic here that I think is the Bills aren't absolutely gonna focus on it. And again, there's probably three centers in the draft that you really want to pay attention to, right? Um, Bradbury is definitely one. Um, Elgin Jenkins is most most definitely one, but I want you to I want you to explain the difference to what it would do to the run game to have a center that's more athletic than the t than the two centers we have on the well we actually have one yeah we have two centers on the roster right now, so besides the two centers that we have on the roster now, what would it mean to bring in a guy that's really athletic like Elgin Jenkins or Garrett Bradbury? Well, what, you said you said it you said it uh, initially was the fact that you can provide more type of um, if you have guards that, that don't really pull well, right? You can, the center can pull, right? And you can run different type of trap plays, uh, inside zones, all, all stuff like that. RPOs are also mixed in with that as well. But as far as the, the lateral movement of the guy, you could pick up different types of blitzes within the game. And what's your number one goal? To protect Josh Allen, right? Right. Um, my biggest thing is not so much the athleticism of it, because I think we're talking about Bradbury and McCoy and these guys because of we think Long is a depth center, right? Yeah. Could could yeah. Long be well, your he, starting he, center? Well, he, he could be. Could, he also could be a starting guard because could, the, Bills, yeah. the Bills have a have a you know a, there's no depth at that position right yeah, now. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. But we're just talking about the guys that are. I think the biggest thing for me will be. How does this guy communicate to the other four guys on the line? Mm -hmm. And how is he able to call out man and zone protections for Josh Allen? Mm -hmm. That's going to be the biggest thing. If he can't do that, he can't get that right away, then that's the thing I'm most concerned about. I don't, the guy could be the fastest 
uh, lineman in the league pulling and knocking out a defensive end. However, if he makes the wrong call and the protection and Josh Allen is blindsided, I don't care how fast he is. Well, and I think this is where it becomes important to know the difference from these colleges as to which ones spread and which one grow. Right? In a spread system, you're not really too concerned about you just need to give the guy two, two and a half seconds to get the ball off. You know, like, you're not really too concerned about what's in front of you. But in a pro-style system, you have to be. So I don't think that impacts just the quarterback. I think that impacts the offensive line, it's the center position specifically. It does, because most of the plays in a spread, you, they're always going to the outside, uh-huh. really quick-hitting throws. And they're often very predetermined. Like, yes. you know the hot route, regardless of, you know, you look at the coverage to say, you know, is this guy pressed at the line? Well, then this guy becomes the hot route. So there's, yeah. there's two different ways to look at that as far as the spread offense is going. All right? They're either quick hitters outside or they try to get them like right, right over the middle. Like just really quick throws, those slants and this and that. So you could say that a team that's going to try to attack that is going to try to attack from the outside so they get in the passing lanes. Or they're going to take the shortest distance to the quarterback and try to run up the middle. So in, in, a, in, a, in a spread system, if you're a center in a spread system, you're just really, you got your head on a swivel really quick after you snap shotgun. Right. A lot of these guys don't do under center very much anymore, which no. NFL doesn't do a lot anyway. No. It didn't seem like Josh Allen's going to be doing a lot of it anyway. Mm-hmm. But one of Josh Allen's strengths is play action. Right. So you would want to have him under center mm-hmm. a lot to do that. So in that respect, you come from a pro style to a spread. The call You're going to make more conventional calls in a pro style as far as the center up top. In a spread, you're just going to be like, okay, we got four guys in front of us. Right, but that's but that's what I'm talking about is, does that make the difference between drafting a center in the first round versus drafting the center in the second or third round? Two guys totally equal in athletic system. One played in a pro system for two years. One played in a spread system for two years. I would so say the two years. You know I would take the pro, pro style, style right. any day. because. But the thing is, in the spread, there's probably not as much tread on the guy because you're not really run blocking all the time. Oh, that's fascinating. I guess I hadn't thought about you're that. Not, you're not run blocking the whole time. That's a good point. So how does his run blocking – Compared to the guy in the pro style. Sure. Because you are sure. blocking all the time in a pro style. Yeah. Well, I guess that's kind of like my one thing about Bradbury that gets me a little bit is he's he works really hard. Don't get me wrong. I like him as a player, but he's not really nasty, right? He's okay to you man want up Taylor with a guy. Lewan. I do want to tailor the one at center, and that's <laughs> and that's what I want. That's what uh-huh. I like in Elgin Jenkins is the kid just throws bodies. <laughs> He's a, he's a fit. Like, you talk about the difference between a guy who's a finisher and a guy who's okay with taking a stalemate, and Elgin Jenkins is a finisher. When he gets his hands on you, you're in trouble. Like, that's it. You're in trouble. And, like, that's what I want. I want I want a guy who's got one hand in the center of a defensive tackle holding him off and looking, looking to help. That's it. Let me let me just hold you. You just, you just don't go anywhere. Let me see if I can help out my lackluster guard that I know you're going to be playing again playing next to this year. <laughs> you know the uh, for the weight that uh, Ed Oliver came in. That could be him. 